Every passing minute is another chance to turn it all around. Never believe a prediction that doesn't empower you. How many predictions have been thrown at you your whole life? If you believe predictions that don't empower you, you will wither away and die. Either physically die or your spirit will die as you just walk around the world like a carcass. You will be given a lot of titles in your life. You will be told so many different things. But you must only listen to that which empowers you. And see, it's not important how long you live. What is important is how you live. The first thing I believe you got to do to turn yourself around is really take control of your mind. Or specifically, you gotta feed and strengthen the mind. Guess what? You gotta make some mistakes in life. So, the person who has never made a mistake hasn't done anything. You are going to make some mistakes. If you want to do something out there, you're going to fail. You are going to fall flat on your face. You are going to be criticized when you come out onto the arena called life. You're going to feel awkward and stupid and dumb sometimes. But take charge of your own life. Then walk away from your 95%. Don't go where they go. Don't do what they do. Don't talk like they talk. Develop your own new language. Don't use their vocabulary and don't use their excuses. Once you look back on it, you will never turn back. You'll never go back the old ways and the old language and the old neglect. Never. Spend each day trying to spend a little wiser than you were when you woke up. Discharge your duties faithfully and well, step by step, you get ahead. But not necessarily in fast spurts. But you build discipline by preparing for fast spurts. I'm not coach right now. I'm your conscience. You're, you're in a fight between will and skill. I say will first because that's where you are. You locked and loaded with skill. You practicing every day. You putting in your work. You buying everything. You making the investment. You living your dream. You walking like your dream. You surrounding yourself around your dream. You got mentors, everything. You putting your work in. You got your skill. Now it's a test of your will. It's a mindset thing you in right now. It's a mindset thing because your challenge your challenge ain't moving. Your mountain is not moving. You don't feel like you're making any progress. You're not physically moving when you see everything else around you and other people around you moving. You're not making progress. You're in the test of your will right now because life says it has a little more test for you. It's no different because we've messed up, because you fell off the wagon, you've been on alcohol and drugs, and you gave up on life, and you dropped out, or you've been to jail one time, two times, three times, and you really want your dream to happen, and you're putting in your work, and nothing's happening yet. Every transformation always gets worse before it gets better. It's supposed to be that way. When you embark this journey, you must know that it's going to go down before it comes up. But when it comes up, it's going to go so much higher than you've ever been. The action of making progress is progress. The, the push itself, the fight, you get up and swing and miss, that's progress. You get up and you run at, at what you want with everything you got and you miss, that's progress. The effort of making the attempt is progress. It must happen. It can't do anything but move. You can do anything but make progress. You're pushing, and you're pushing, and you're pushing, and you're pushing, and you're doing everything right. You're tired, you're exhausted, and ain't nothing happening yet. That word is what you're waiting for. Yet. Because I promise you, if you keep pushing, 
If you keep giving me all your effort, it will happen. You have to be equipped mentally to endure this process. Knowing what you're about to go into is step one. Knowing it's an uphill battle, but a winnable one and one that's achievable. And at the end of this race, guys, you're gonna be more capable. The first step, guys, is knowing it's a tough road. As soon as you decide to stop looking for answers in other people and miracles somewhere down the yellow brick road and click the heel of your mind and set your affections on things that are above, you could have been free years ago. All jealousy, all pettiness, all unforgiveness, all strife, all malice, all confusion, all blaming other people for your mistake. You got till midnight to get rid of every poison that's hindering you, every inflexibility that's stopping you from what God is about to pour into your life. Woe be unto you if you go into another year and waste another year with the old mentality while somebody's in the hospital begging God for the opportunity that you have right now. You better step into this moment. Everybody talks about being successful, but not everybody's willing to do what it takes to be successful. Everybody wants to hold the trophy up at the end of the game, but not everybody wants to put in the work to be a champion. Success is earned, it's not given. And it's a place where only the strong survive. And if you want to be successful, you have to be willing to make the sacrifices. You have to have the courage to fight through the darkness just to get to the light. You have to have the will to crawl when you can't walk and the patience to walk when you can't yet run. When you wanna be successful, you have to be willing to go through hell and high water to make your dreams come true. And I promise you, when you have that mindset, I don't care what's put in front of you. Nothing will stop you. It's possible. In spite of the fact that things aren't working out right now, in spite of the fact that I don't have all the things I need, I don't have the help and the assistance I need, it's still possible that I'm still in the game, I'm still breathing, I still have life, that no one has the right to count you out, to disregard your presence. No one has the right to do that. You want to give yourself a fighting chance where we have unending hope that, that we begin to align ourselves with the highest that's within us. You take yourself out of the ring, you never have a chance to know whether or not you could have made it happen. But if you could stay in there, and what can keep you in there? What can get you up off the canvas? As long as I'm in the ring, I've got an opportunity to pull it off. Everybody wants to be a beast until it's time to do what beasts do. And what you have to understand is, I do what beasts do. And you cannot just say you want it. It's cute to say it. But when it's showtime, when the sun comes up, you got all the books, you got all the tapes, you got all the access. Now it's time to hunt. And what separates you from everybody else is that when it's time to hunt, you're ready to hunt. A true hunter hunts. A true hunter's goal is not the prize. A true hunter's goal is to hunt. That's what they live for. They live to hunt. They don't just live to catch it. It's the whole process. When you are a true hunter, you don't hunt from eight to three. Why? Because the gazelle may not be open from eight to three. You hunt until you get a gazelle and you don't stop until you get one. Find out what it is you want and go after it as if your life depends on it. Why? Because it does. The most powerful motivational speeches that I have ever heard came from people who told me I couldn't do something. You know why? Because when they told me I couldn't do it, I was bound and determined to show them that I could. Tell me I can't do it. 
I will prove you wrong. I will show you. We are not made to survive. We're not made to manage our pain or get through it. We're made to be creators of our lives. We can create anything. Anything we can dream about, we can create. How much of life do you feel like you control? Or how much does life control you? Do you tend to control more of what's going on or events controlling you? It's very easy to have those events start to take control unless we take control of what's between our ears, our own mind. You see, what you and I focus on massively affects how we feel, whether we're thriving or surviving. If you focus on what you can't control, if you focus on the past, if you focus on what's missing from your life constantly, that pattern of focus will make you frustrated, overwhelmed, depressed. Focus equals power. If you want to thrive, you got to focus on what you can control. you got to focus on the difference you can make. you got to focus on what's already in your life that you're grateful for. Most people allow their fear of failure, 80%, allow their fear of failure to outweigh their desire to succeed. When you're willing to fail again and again and again, when you make up your mind to become unstoppable, when you make up your mind to become a no matter what person, then that will then give birth to a part of yourself that you don't know right now. Set some higher goals, reach for some higher purpose. Go for something beyond what you thought you could do. You've got to believe that tomorrow can be better than today. But here's the big one. Believe in yourself. Believe in yourself. Ask for wisdom to deal with the challenges of today and tomorrow. Don't wish it was easier. Wish you were better. Wish you were better. Well, I had decided much earlier, even within the first hour of entrapment, that I would have to cut my arm off, except I couldn't figure out how to do it. Uh, by the final night that I was there, I was pretty sure that I was going to, I was going to die. The, it, bef I was certain of that by the first, the first time I even turned the camera on, 24 hours into it, I was going to die. I couldn't cut my arm off. I would either bleed to death before I could get the medical help, and then I realized the knife isn't sharp enough to get through the skin, or, and then it isn't sharp enough to get through the bone. There's the, the vision as I had of a little boy who comes running over to me as I walk. I, I saw this uh, kind of in a dreamlike moment of the sixth day, the fifth night that I was there. That it was um, it was dark in the canyon, but I saw myself leave and go into a living room. And here I scoop up this little blonde-haired boy, and and as I know that this is my future son. Here he is, and you know, I'm looking him straight in the eyes. And then it was the epiphany of realizing that I could break the bones of my arm. I didn't have to cut through them with the knife. I could break them. And from that point, it was just this smile. Still today, I look at it and I wouldn't change anything. That wouldn't take a sharper knife, wouldn't have a jacket, wouldn't take more water. Like, I just, it had to happen the way that it happened. To me, it's, it's all been a blessing. What the gift of it is, is that it, it, it draws me out of my, my daily experience into a place of appreciation and gratitude.